Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade functional equation. Or should I call this a homemade functional system? You get to decide. But we have two equations. 2 times f of x minus f inverse of x, the inverse function, equals x. And then the second one is 2 times f of f of x, the composition of f, f with itself, plus the inverse function equals 3x. So I guess this could be considered a system, but again, let me know what you think. And I call this a homemade problem because I thought about the idea. I haven't seen a problem like this before. If you did anywhere else, let us know in the comment section down below. So to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to use an interesting method. That actually, that's how the problem came about. So the method kind of brought about this idea. And let me show you. And by the way, I'll be presenting two methods. But let's start with the first one, and I'll pose a question. First step, and I want to number the equations. Let's let this one be the first equation, and let this one be the second equation. The top one is first, the bottom one is second. So that I can refer to them as number one, number two, so on and so forth. So using equation number one, which is two times f of x minus f inverse of x, equals x. By the way, since I gave you a system like this with f inverse, that means f is invertible. It's a bijection. Make sense? So, so we're going to try to solve for f of x. That's our goal. And here's what I'm going to do first. I will replace x with f of x. Why, you might be asking. Because that will give me f of f of x here, and things will cancel out here. Let's find out what happens. Replace x, and by the way, can we do this? Does that mean x equals f of x? No, it's just a replacement. We can use substitution, and we can replace x with y, x with 2y, x with y, x plus y, anything we want. If you don't like that, replace x with f of t, and then replace t with x, but why bother? That's too much work. So we're going to get 2 times f of f of x minus f inverse. Again, pretend we don't know what it is of x, which is f of x, because now notice that we're replacing all the x's with f of x. And then here we have an x, so we're going to replace it with f of x. This is valid, right? I mean, as long as you replace x with the same thing everywhere, this should work. Just like evaluating a function at a point. Now, this gives us something nice, because f inverse of f of x is just x. Why? x takes, like f takes x to f of x, this is the image, and then f inverse takes it back. So the result, they, they kind of cancel out. I know it's not that rigorous, but too bad for the rigor police. They cancel out and leaves us with 2 times f of f of x minus x equals f of x. And this is just awesome. You can call this equation number 3 if you want. I don't care, and you sh probably shouldn't care either. Now, here's the most important part, though. For the solution of this problem, Notice that by using substitution, we got an x, but now it's on the left-hand side. Does it matter? Absolutely. And what we're going to do is actually pretty interesting, kind of like going around in circles, but it solves the problem. And let me know if you don't think this works. But we got this x, right? And what is x? Well, from equation number one, we know that x is equal to this. But wait a minute, didn't you come from equation number one? Let's say this is equation number three. So we got equation number three from equation number one, and now we're gonna use equation number one in equation three, but aren't they essentially the same thing? Well, let's see what happens. Now I'm gonna go ahead and replace x with what it is, which is two times f of x minus f inverse. And it's just gonna make things much, much better. You'll see it's, it's amazing. I don't know, I just find it exciting, fascinating, and let me know what you think. So now we're replacing x with 2 times f of x minus f inverse, which is, again, equation number 1. So this is equation number 1. It comes from number 1, but this comes from number 3. So kind of like a jumbo mumbo. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Expand or distribute the negative. 2 times f of f of x minus 2 f of x minus minus, like kind of double negation, is going to give us plus f inverse equals f of x. Now we 
see like terms. These two are like terms. They like each other. What can I do? So let's go ahead and add two f of x to both sides. Two times f of f of x plus f inverse equals three f of x. Cool. You might be questioning like, is this any better than what we started with? I mean, is this better than the original? Yes and no. Now, if you go back and look, what, look at equation number two, you're going to realize something mind-blowing. I don't know. I find it mind-blowing. You may not agree. But look at this. What are we talking about? On the left-hand side, we have 2 times f of f of x plus f inverse, which is exactly what we have here. So we know what this equals. Therefore, we know what this equals. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Now we can replace the right-hand side with 3x because that's what it is, or the left-hand side. This is 3x, therefore this is 3x. Wow, such a cool solution, don't you think? f of x equals x, case closed. Now what's really interesting though, when we do the second method, so hang in there to not disappear because we're going to do an awesome second method, which is kind of questionable, and I'm going to let you decide why. But Here's the second method I'll be presenting, and you'll get to decide which one you like better and what's the issue here, if there's an issue, of course, right? <laughs> so, equation number one again, because we really like it. By the way, a question, remember I told you that I was going to pose a question? The question is, it's a million dollar question, but I'm going to answer it for you. Why did not we use equation number two first? Remember, we started with equation number one, right? Why didn't we use number two first? You know why? Okay, pause the video if you don't want to hear it. We didn't use number two first because it's number two. <laughs> Anyways, equation number one again is this. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to think about a possible scenario. I mean, I'm not saying this is the only way this is going to work, but I could say something at the end. Well, suppose f is linear. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> well, it's clear that I'm assuming that f can be linear. So if f is linear, then f of x can be written as mx plus b. As you know, there are two ways to do it. Sometimes people will use x plus b, which is a linear function, but mx plus b is a little better. You know why? Because m is the slope. That kind of represents the graph of a line, so on and so forth. Get the idea? Great. A little bit of linear uh, algebra here, or linear equations, I should say. But anyways, this is f of x, and guess what? I'm going to use it here. But what is f inverse? Well, if f is given as follows, I'm going to give you a formula as a bonus. Are you ready? If you have a linear function such as mx plus b, its inverse is given by x minus b divided by m. You might be wondering, like, how on earth did you find it? Set f of x equal to y, solve for x, and then replace x and y, or switch. You'll get that. Okay? Easy. Now, we do know what to replace f inverse with. Cool, cool. Now let's do it. 2 times f of x, which is 2 times mx plus b, minus f inverse, which is x minus b divided by m, equals x. Isn't that beautiful? We have an equation, kind of like a polynomial equation, where both sides are equivalent for all values of x. So you can change x and set up an equation, but there's a better way to do it. First, let's go ahead and distribute. 2mx plus 2b, allow me to say, 2b or not 2b. That's the problem. Minus this thing equals x. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by m so that we can get rid of the denominator. So we get 2m squared x plus 2bm minus, if you like Mercedes Benz, you can also write it as mb. I don't. And then this is going to be x minus b. Notice that you have to keep that in parentheses or negate it because... This look, uh, works as a parenthesis, this one, this fraction bar. Now, you got to go ahead and kind of expand it. And then we need to collect like terms. You can also put the MX on the left, but I'm going to keep it this way because it's going to turn out to be the same thing at the end anyways. Notice that these two are like terms, so we can kind of write it as 2M squared minus 1. That's the coefficient of X. And our constant term is 2BM plus B. And on the right-hand side, we don't have a constant. The constant, in other words, is 0. Beautiful. So the coefficient of x is m, so it needs to be m here. And since there is no constant on the right-hand side, that needs to be a 0. You got it? Polynomial equations. Now, we have a system from here, but the first one is more interesting. 
Let me tell you why. This gives you a quadratic in M. Beautiful. So we can solve it with the quadratic formula. Let's do it. By the way, this is factorable. I was not expecting. Well, I kind of was, but anyways, let's just pretend I wasn't. 2M and 1, M and 1. And since this is kind of easy case, I don't have to use the X method really, really in this uh, problem. I can just write it like this. 2M plus 1. But there is a general method. Or you can use the quadratic formula. It's going to give you the same thing. Beautiful. Because from here we get rational solutions. M equals negative 1 half or M equals 1. Great. What is that supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and find out uh, from the other equation. Because this one is more interesting. Well, maybe not. But the idea is we can factor out a b here. And guess what that means? It means either b is 0 or 2m plus 1 is 0, which includes both can be 0. But guess what? If m is negative 1 half, wait a minute, did I do that right? If m is negative 1 half, then uh, b doesn't have to be 0. Okay. Then maybe we can get something like this. m equals negative 1 half, and b is a real number. Anything. Or m equals 1, and if m is equal to 1, of course, it can't, it can't be 0, then b has to be 0. Make sense? So, we kind of got these two cases. Case number 1, case number 2. Let's go ahead and write a function for each of those. Remember, we assumed that f is linear, and that turned out to be okay. So if m is equal to negative 1 half, we can write it as negative 1 half x plus b. b is generic and can be anything. Or f of x can be mx, which is 1x, plus 0, which means f of x equals x. And remember what we did find with method number 1. We did find f of x equals x, which kind of verifies. Now, this seems good, but what about this? Is this going to work? And why didn't we find it, if it does, with the first method? That's the second million dollar question you need to answer. But I'm going to leave it as an exercise. I'm not going to answer it. But one thing you can do is plug it in and find out. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus BI. And bye-bye.